Ladies and gentlemen, before I say the opening prayer for this afternoon, I just wanted to say how glad and how proud to be amongst you. As I, as I know, all my life, all nations got their own ayah, their own territory. The only thing the way I look at it, I was talking to Jerry for a while, is to the beginning of I don't know more, we should get together and do it more often to show who we are. So to everybody that we got our own laws, our own ayah. And I asked Jared the day before, I opened with the word prayer. Since we're standing on the Simshian territory, let us all bow our heads in the word of prayer as we give thanks. And I'm going to say it in our own language, let us bow our heads. We thought that the book of Moor and Shemogi, in the Guad and the Tulhak. That's not the only food that's acting in the Guad. I don't need to let you want to go over and find you because it's a lot. And I feel like I love you, I got a year of the little doors. There is a shake out in the school that you want to walk me out in the middle. Men dat jij al achter die en nou de man was het gekocht in de kielen. Am koor is de vliet in jet de hoor. Zullen loog in de bedieten. En dat die wil aan jij die de ajaal. Die de kaadaal. Wie nu waarlijk is wel hard goed nodig. Dus bij hij die dat sparen ik toe. Ne guys and we second all your engine work all the good from Jesus Christ and Lord from Israel. Amen. Points. Good job from Kitsis. Well high care of the big. Sandiket, Sandiket, Legiket, Legiket, Kabawaz. My traditional name is Wilad. I come from the house of the Shogunat. Wadi Halim, Lawrence Halim is my uncle, my mother's oldest brother. An older living brother. It's an honor to welcome you to this place. It's where our Tao belongs with our house and things that I'm beginning to learn. I'm very honored, Mr. Lewis. I don't know how to say his name properly, so I don't want to make a mistake. In the old ways, that was very important, and I wish to try to honor as much as I can. We're coming to a point in time where our culture is beginning to drift away further from us than it ever was before. And it's up to us to stand these things up. I don't know more is one, one thing that shows positive hope for me. I hold a Kalbalikam gun for the kids in my hands. So you can see it's still not finished. And I don't mind using it this way. I do not want to see our culture be buried. I want new life to it. And from that, I have to carve these things out again for myself. As an individual, that's what I understand. It's your responsibility to wear your name properly. It's your responsibility to your mom's brother to prove that you're worthy to hold the name. It wasn't enough to be the eldest child's, the eldest sister's firstborn son. That's what we consider the packing order. Then the second sister's firstborn son, etc. Then you go back up again. 
This is the way I understand it to be. These things we must relearn again. It's Sebsyan. I sit with my dad's family, up in Anas, and witnessed feast ever since I was a little boy. Everybody told me I was this guy. Look on Siwa. He registered under that band. I sat and I listened. I was like, like a lot of young people, learning. I'm still learning. And I hope to learn for the rest of my life. Because there's so much to learn, especially it has to do with respect of what's left. This man I know is a pillar in our, in our nation. Not everyone Sibaliks anymore. To be a people, to be a nation, you need to speak your language. You need to have a history. I'm lucky on that part. With Sibaliks, the Tsimshen, the Dusha, and the Kiksen. We share one language, but we share another history with everybody, called the Tao, if I'm saying it correctly. It's the real truth. Where did we come from? How did we get to the places we, we call our territories today? Brothers and sisters, anyone who's a, any raven crest is my sister. There's laws of a you don't marry her. Be with your sister. These are ayao, traditional laws, that go back to the beginning of time in the heavens and we live with the Creator, as I understand it. In each of these four branches, the Anhada, the Husky, the Kisnivara, the Lachibu, that's where we're all connected. A long time ago, when we were still in the heavens and living with the Creator, our house structures were different. And we're all one house then. Everybody comes from the world house from the beginning of time. But as we migrate down through different paths, everybody has their story how and where they went to. And that's why our names crisscross, go back and forth in different ways. Like my sister now lives in Parksville with her husband, who's supposed to take a big name in the house in Skagway. I'm not really sure which one, but I see the house is here. I don't wish to make a mistake and talk about what they want to do. It's their right and privilege, and I recognize their bloodline is having that right. Our ways are not easy, especially being Zimshan. I think it's important to express these things because it explains what you see here. When I go up to the Nas, everybody knows their protocol because they've never stopped feasting. When I go up to the Hiksan country, I witnessed the same thing with their smoke feasts and other things that are proper, the things we used to do as well, and share. And some of the old, ancient language, schools, I think it is, the heavenly, the, the proper etiquette language, when we do these things. In the old days, as I understand it, there were nine Tsumagas in the, in the Tsumshan, the people who survived on Mount McNeil over there. That's why they were called Tsumshan. The other people who feast with us have been forced into this identification because of anthropology has grouped us that way. I think it's time for us to redefine and explain to people we know who we are. We need to have our voices listened to. Ayao is very important. And when you stand up and you take a name as a Lisa Moigat and you hold that hayas, that copper shield, that is authority. This is the old law. I just heard of a man named Bo Dick, and their Uyghola, their language, it's southern language. He's a Hainas, they say, which is Smoyan. Of the Nandis, I believe, is the tribe. He went to the Parliament building yesterday and he cut up a copper shield, freeing himself from the colonial viewpoint. These things are what affects us today. Our environment is, is being ruined all over the world. If anybody's ever been to Europe, you see how much fresh water they have there. You can't drink their water that comes out of the taps. It's contaminated. 
You can't go and fish anywhere. They're privately owned. You can't live off the land. Everything's regulated and regulated. If you don't come from old money, you may have three or four jobs to make ends meet. I feel like those things are changing for you and I today. I love all my brothers and sisters. The white brothers, even though we've had bad history with them when they came here to colonize us or recognize us or maybe not. A long time ago when things were different before the wars, our yellow brothers did work with them. But they were considered men still. Then in recent history, the black man who was impoverished, enslaved by them, was great peace movers like Martin Luther King, Gandhi, to mention a few, who began a movement that changed the world after World War II, Nuremberg. All the atrocities they did to the Jewish people. A lot of BC, Canada's history swept under the carpet. Nobody wants to recognize it because it, it slows down development. Maybe it's time for development to be slowed down. You see those tar sands over there? How much pollution they're pumping into the world here? 30% of the, the fresh water in the world is in Canada. I don't know how many millions of gallons they keep per tape there to get that. It's better than not. We can't stop. I honor all the ladies here. We must be peaceful about this. I want to express a few more things about my culture to define it for the ones that are here because I need their help. I've talked with Sam. I know there's lots of other people who carry names from their nation, their bloodline. They have respect in their own homes, in their own lands. Some of those houses we share history when we go back to the ancient part. A long time ago when we separated from the heavens in the spirit time and Mechem Khan and Amget went through all the different kingdoms. As they did, they descended down to another dimension. And they learn different things about how it was to be a real person in the heaven and be worthy to live with the Creator again. He finished all his training. The way I understand it, I still need to, to be educated. He was born as a halai, both sides of him. Then he came a wee halai, he got his dance apron. Then he put on his quest halai, his supernatural spirit, a good spirit. And when he was finished the training, he had an Amahalite. Now he could dance this peace ceremony. The southern people, the Tanis, the Hamatsa, they still do these rituals. We're part of that. I spent a long time down there with, with those people and feasted in those Hatsuk houses, Heisla houses, Hanaxila houses, Kwakwakila houses, Salish houses. And I understand all these things to be true. But there's a dignity and respect that they carry that this world lacks. And we need to bring that back. We need to be humble again. I'm very humble amongst the other nations. At one time we were a proud, strong part of the culture of the coast. That's how we possess a third of the coastline. And we share different things with all over the place. Before I end, I'd like to explain this poll and its significance. A few years back, in 2010 in April, I took my name then. We get a bloodline from my grandmother, who was born in 70 yet, from John Nelson from Kitkas. I think he used the names Wiseks and Nisquasa, and held the other names Seix and Tidasa at one time. He never wore them, as I understand it. There's a lot of history of to all those things which I'd like to learn more about, and I put that question out. 
One time we had a meeting with Tithraki. And I stood up and I asked who had come to my uncle Buddy's feet in 1945, December 12th, with Edward Gamble from the village with summons. And he put the name High Mass on. I know four people there stood up and said, we remember that, we remember that. And then when he took the name Nishabhanath and came or spying it in December of 1949 after Ambrose Reed passed away, the one who was before him, the same four again identified them. Edward passed away in 46, as I understand. And then Russell Gamble stood in that place and called his name Nishabhanath. But these are the things you do when you have a feast, but to let you all know. So I'd like to explain this sick, then I'll call upon our masters and ceremonies to carry on. At the base here is the rest of our council, our men, like you get. The House of Plume, through my research, was the last one to used to speak on behalf of the Benhadas, the remaining Raven Houses. And one of which we come from, but we're simply get. The houses are all ranked by the names through the Adal, all of these things are expressed. Then the house of Asagal Yan is next, also speaking for the remaining Lachibu wolf houses. Then Nishkazal is the next one. The eagle people, speaks for all of the eagle people. Then Wadzada. There's no one remaining in the house that I know of here anymore. The last one, I think, was James White. This was back in the 30s. There may be more relatives up in Taiwan. There was another 70 get house that stood with us. The house of Wilaha. Our cousins, another portion of our house. I don't know if I see any of them here and ask them to stand if they are. But they're descendants of that part. And on top is the house of Nishabhanad, the Sembi Get House, the ruling house, the one who will hold the copper shield. I want to try to reestablish these things and at the same time pose a question. What is respect? Who are we as we are people? What is sacred to us? Long before money ever came into existence, thousands of years ago, and before colonization affected the total world, we were people, we were all First Nations. All the people have primary cultures like ours. It wasn't until 1791 that the Kamsiwa touched our land for the first time. We traded with them up in the Alaska part and down in California, other areas where the Spanish were, and the Russians were, and Americans were starting to come up. And the English came across in their boat, and the Spanish came across in their boat and traded with us. We knew they were coming, but that was the first time they came to us. In 1831, they established a fort and lived amongst us for the first time, the Super Gulf. As in the old ways, they married to one of the chiefs and made peace that way and they were able to put a house on some land and be protected under that civilian authority. That's just a little glimpse of what we're talking about. That's a short time for once proud people to disappear. Don't forget the ones that went before us, Martin Luther King, Gandhi. I don't know all their histories. It's like ours. They're complicated. They're always not nice stories. The Bible story with Jesus is complicated. But in the end, there's hope. And that's what we're doing here, I think. So thank you for your attention. Um, Step back and let our MCs here come forward. I'm honored you're all here and I hope you feel welcome and take care of yourself. I wish you well. Good luck, Ethan.